everybody. I am Jennifer Nockfee, uh, founder and maker at Oh So Good Organics. I make organic handcrafted bath, body, and home care uh, soaps, bath bombs, hand sanitizers, soy candles, and the like. Um, so, a little bit about myself um, how Oh So Good Organics got started. It started from a love of the earth. Um, <laughs> I remember when I was around 11. My family and I were stationed overseas in the Philippines and since the Philippines is just an absolutely captivating island, um, it, it, six months out of the year it rains and I remember how vivid um, all of the plant life was and I remember smelling the soil one day and it smelled like electricity, something me metallic and I just fell in love with it. I had all these visions in my head of like electrical currents running through the ground. And I was so enamored by it that I wore brown for a month um, to pay homage to the earth. Um, my mom, she was pretty cool about it. She's like, okay, we have, we have a, a special interesting child. And I was like, you don't even know I can understand what the plants are saying, just so you know. Um, so that morphed into um, me becoming a little bit more academic about understanding the earth and how it works and this whole wonderful, beautiful natural ecosystem that thankfully um, Mother Earth does in the background and is not dependent on our actions as humans. Um, so when I was stationed in um, Okinawa, uh, o Okinawa is a little bit more rural. It's an island off the coast of Japan. There's a lot of farms, it's a big farming community. So after my duties for the day, I would go off base and I would ask the farmers if I could just hang out. Um, specifically because I remember watching them and the, you know, they were older, they were up in age, um, but still very spry. You know, they had their shirts off and they had the bodies of you know, 20 year olds. And the Okinawans have the longest lifespan uh, as far as you know on the on the planet. So I was really curious about what they ate, how they farmed, um, how they go about their day psychologically and emotionally. And what I learned is that they, um, everything that they ate, everything that they consumed, they grew themselves. And they grew with natural, uh, no, no pesticides, natural fertilizers. Um, so that just kind of reinforced my interest in understanding how the planet is so life-giving. Um, seriously, all you have to do is just put a seed in the ground, put some water in it, and then, you know, in a couple of weeks or a couple of months, you have a whole plant. And then eventually you can you know, keep that going and then you'll have a whole food system. Something so small and dry, all this genetic information just compacted into this, probably what humans would say is an insignificant thing um, holds the answer to you know our our whole our whole livelihood our whole food system um, I'm sure since we live in an urban area you've done the homework with your kids about the soil and how they need to take care of it and um, uh, everything that goes into sustainability is, is big now is a big topic in school so anyway we're going to talk about urban homesteading today so before I get into that, because we can really go down the rabbit hole, I want to take you on a bit of a history journey, and let's talk about the history of homesteading in the U.S. and the definition of homesteading uh, as we know it today. So what is homesteading? I'm going to look at my cue cards here. So homesteading is a lifestyle of self-sufficiency characterized by subsistence agriculture. And what subsistence agriculture is when farmers grow food, crops to meet the needs of themselves and their families. In subsistence agriculture, farm output is targeted to survival and is mostly for local requirements with little or no surplus, i.e., you know, a vegetable garden uh, or an urban homestead. So home preservation of foodstuffs and may or may not also involve the small scale production of textiles, clothing, craft work for household use or sale. So that is the current definition of homesteading, self-sufficiency, typically characterized by agriculture. Um, so before I really get into urban or modern homesteading, again, I wanna take you on a journey. Um, so the history of the Homestead Act in this country 
is basically the history of the 1862 Homestead Act in the U.S. Um, so there's no sugarcoating this. As we know, the creation of the United States is kind of steeped in turmoil and largely unethical, ethical behavior at slavery and the stealing of the native land, which the Homestead Act of 1862 effectively did. Um, in order to better ourselves today, we have to fully be aware of what we were yesterday. Um, so the Homestead Act of 1862 was signed into law by Abe Lincoln on the 20th of May. It gave 160 acres um, to the head of household to work and cultivate the land. And it also encouraged to spread further west and only granted citizens uh, only granted citizens 116 acres and since natives and slaves at the time weren't considered citizens because slavery wasn't made illegal until 1865, the Homestead Act was basically squatters' rights. Um, so what I want us to do is understand where we came from and understand what we're a product of and what we're descendants of and how we can better preserve the earth and do no harm to it today. So segue into urban homesteading, the modern definition is a person who transforms a city or a suburban property into a home that produces some or all of its residents' own food and other basic needs with the goal of reducing environmental impact while increasing self-sufficiency. Um, so an example of that is my neighbors and I have a very nice system. Um, as you can see, I have more of um, above ground uh, grow system here. I've got culinary herbs. I have um, topical herbs and botanicals that I use for my apothecary, hence comfrey. I uh, grew onions from food scraps, um, you know, from dinner that we made the other day. This is thyme, sage, rosemary, peppermint. Um, peppermint is a great grower. Um, you can also take like basil from the full noodle place and just um, stick it in some water and then as it sprouts then you can come outside and just you know stick it in your garden bed um so yeah we have a good system where i if i have anything excess left over that i've grown i'll give it to my neighbors my neighbors also have their own gardens and they have different ways of gardening especially since we're such a diverse neighborhood in terms of diverse cultures um, my neighbors from India, they come from um, a, a village, a farming village. And so I was like really curious because I, I saw, you know, the, the Bubby, the grandpa outside one day and he was tending to his garden. He had the best and healthiest um, peppermint stalks. So I was like, what are you doing um, to, to yield such uh, beautiful crop? And he's like, oh, you know, I just put eggshells and um, mushrooms and you know there's some other herbs that are indicative to their culture in terms of cooking herbs that he also uses um, uh, yeah, as an additive to um, to the soil that he uses for for his garden so I, I, I get to really learn and incorporate all of these different farming methods all of these different agricultural methods uh, in, into my own garden. So we, we share, um, you know, I give you some time, you'll give me some lavender that you're growing or vice versa. And what that's doing is um, we're staying away from, you know, purchasing from, from large corporations or big business. I also try to use seeds um, that are, are provided from local farms or local co-ops or seed savers. Um, so one um, farm in uh, mineral, West, mineral Virginia is Southern Exposure Seed Exchange and it's owned by uh, a lady farmer which is I think is really cool. Um, so this is also keeping the finances and also oh and what she does is she offers organic and heirloom seeds. Um, so this is keeping the 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 seed loop uh, within this area and we're also supporting uh, local business and we're supporting the, uh, the local economy. Um, another really awesome local um, urban or suburban business is Loudon based uh, food loop compost. And as we'll get into it, compost can be an essential component to um, to gardening or to home gardening or to garden bed uh, and an essential component to uh, your soil. Um, so this is 
mountain food loop compost and what you do all you do is you just take your food scraps applicable food scraps um, no meat um, obviously no um, plastics or anything like that so what I do is I just you know run some water over my eggs once once I'm done cooking with them coffee I'm a big coffee drinker and you just put everything in and then this two gallon bucket is five dollars you can purchase it online um, and you can either once it's full you can bring it back to her or you can sign up for um, sign up for her service where she comes and picks it up from you and then in return you'll receive um, compost and then you can add that to your garden okay all right um, other local sources of agriculture and other local sources of keeping kind of the food loop in this area is Hal's Honey Farm in Chantilly it's across from Cox Farms I love them because they're like on the Boy Scouts honor where he leaves um, the honey out on a table and you basically just and the the how much it costs is tagged on there he never you know then you just leave the money underneath a rock or inside of a, a can and then you know you take your uh, you take your honey and I love local honey because I have allergies and the more local honey I consume because the bees are gathering nectar producing the honey uh, from local you know local botanicals it helps um, strengthen my immune system. Um, so there's a, a plethora of reasons why um, keeping everything going in the local in the local loop is important. Okay, so let's get into just a simple, very straightforward um, uh, garden, urban garden. Urban garden, that's what we're gonna call it. Um, so since we are suburbanites, we have a little bit of disposable income. Um, so we're not exclusively living off the land. Um, so we've got Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart, and um, the producers have gotten pretty savvy in what they're providing to the consumers. Um, I really like these. These are not organic, but they also have organic. Um, it's great because you can just take off the plastic and then stick this sucker directly into your planter and it'll decompose all on its own. So this is tomato, it's a tomato plant. What I'm going to do later after uh, this workshop is I'm actually going to put it in this big guy over here and um, incorporate this trellis into it because tomatoes need something to climb on. Um, but I just wanted to give you an example of some of the benefits of being in a suburban or urban area that you can take advantage of. Okay, so let's get into soil. So you want to make sure that your soil is a loamy soil. Uh, and what that, if you create your own soil, there's a couple of steps that you need to take in order to make your soil loamy. But if you go to, again, you know, Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart, that's already been done for you. Um, so you just get like a potting mix, an organic potting mix. Um, specifically, I like to use organic potting mixes because it already has the peat moss, usually the perlite, and some compost and some fertilizer already in it. Um, if you want, depending on how large your plot is, you can add some additional features. You can add in compost if you want. You can add in some of the more, um, you know, corporate products if you'd like to in terms of fertilizer. Um, or you can make your own. Again, I prefer just to use compost if you have a really good compost. Typically, for, a, for an urban garden, you don't need to add in any extra fertilizer. The compost should do that for you. Um, but if you, if you want to, there are options. So what I like to do is first do a seed starter. Because if I start seeds outside, the squirrels are going to keep them. The squirrels are all over the deck early in the morning, 5, 6 o'clock in the morning. So And that's pretty, and this is really easy and fun. So you want to pick... Um, 
seeds or whatever you're trying to grow, are you trying to grow for ornamental? Are you trying to grow for consumption? Are you trying to grow for, you know, an apothecary? You have to make sure that whatever you're planting is applicable to the season uh, that we're in. So you just take, it's, it's pretty simple. You take a seed and you can use um, an you know, old egg carton. I prefer to use um, the ones made from you know, material, cardboard material versus the plastic ones. Um, fill it up with the soil that you've either made or directly from the bag. And literally, you just create a little hole, you know, half a digit or a digit in, and you stick it in. Cover it. And if you have a spritzer, just spritz it with some water and then you should see it start to sprout. And once it sprouts, then you can, trans you can transfer it to either an inside or an indoor pot, or if you think it's ready, um, you can bring it outdoors. But just make sure that whatever you're planting is w within season. Uh, and all those directions are usually on the, back, on the back of the packet, of the seed packet. So what I like to do before I plan, before I plant, I sit down and I plan out my garden and I plan it out per season. And then I have to keep in mind, what is it I'm trying to accomplish? Do I want to mix? Do I want to mix of ornamental? Do I want to mix of apothecary, topical apothecary? Or, or do I want uh, to, to plant, um, to, to plant for consumption, uh, to feed my family, or to exchange with neighbors. So a good idea is to sit down, write all that out, plan all that out, and then figure out what soil you need, um, because certain plants require either nitrogen or phosphorus, uh, and all that information is listed on the back of the package. So if you're, if you're really getting into gardening, you, you have to understand um, all of the, the more um, scientific chemical components to it but if it, if you if you know if you're just doing a, a really cool urban garden it can be pretty if, you know in your backyard or on your deck it's pretty straightforward go get the potting soil figure out what you want to grow make sure it's within the right season per, um, purchase the applicable materials and really just get started and then enjoy it make sure you have a hat it's really hot today if you want to wear makeup or not, it's up to you. I get really sweaty when I work. I'm only wearing makeup, you know, because I have to present well um, to my audience. Um, just t-shirt, typically you want to wear long sleeves, especially if you're working um, in, a, in a large raised garden bed or in ground, because sometimes the fertilizer or the compost can um, irritate your skin. Um, but make sure you have a good pair of gloves. Make sure you have your seeds. Make sure you have a pair of scissors. Make sure you've got your spade. So what I like to do is I like to set up my workstation before I even begin. That way everything's there. That way I'm not going in and out of the house. I'm not trekking soil into the house. Um, sometimes what I'll do is I'll uh, lay down um, uh, garbage bags. That, that way if I need to dump some of the old soil, I can just dump it in the garb on the garbage bags, put in the new soil, fold up the old garbage bags and be done with it. Or what you can, instead of throwing it away, you can also um, redisperse it in your backyard. Um, if, if, you know, if, if you're okay with that. Um, so yeah, just enjoy it. Have fun with it. Do your homework, read more about gardening and read more about why it's so important that we have a local loop. And just by you making small steps, small impactful steps, just in your own house, and then kind of spreading that to your neighbors, how that positively impacts the environment and what we can do um, to protect this incredible rock that we're living on. So I hope you enjoyed uh, this quick easy workshop. Um, I'm going to list a couple of um, 
places where you can go online uh, to gather more information and also local businesses that you can tap into, such as uh, the Food Loop Compost on Food Loop Compost, Southern Exposure Sheet Exchange, CSAs, local CSAs that you can also partake in, and uh, a little bit more information in terms of uh, in terms of gardening. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, come visit me too. I sign up for the newsletter, sign up for the blog, osogoodorganics.com. I hope you have a good day. Thank you.